This is the smoker. That picture started off by me wanting to make a picture of a smoker. It sort of relates to this Magritte painting from the late 40s. I was gonna have an exhibition in Brussels. Magritte's from Brussels. It seemed like a suitable environment for this, uh, this sort of game. I started using Photoshop when I was still an undergrad. It was just like a procedural tool. Like it was a replacement for the darkroom. It felt like special effects for a long time. You know, it felt just like something after the fact, that it was sort of making up ground for a picture. It took me a long time to get to a place where I understood how I might be able to use it. Around the time I read Bertolt Brecht's book on theater, he was talking about bringing the labor that happened off stage in a theater production onto the stage. And I started to think about the kinds of labor I was hiding. There are all these ways to sort of hide your labor in Photoshop. And I've been really interested in sort of undermining those things. There are a lot of things the computer will do for you that don't need you. And those have never been tools I've been particularly attracted to. Like, I'm attracted to the ones that are sort of the dumbest tools in Photoshop. And I, I tend to use them in sort of the most uh, blunt way. One of the rules of photography seems to be that the photograph needs to be homogeneous. It needs to be one thing. Usually that's one view. I was really interested in how I add levels of labor to photographs without losing that sense of photographicness. And the cutting through was part of that. In commercial practice, in masking, it's a way to select the sky in a photograph and make it a darker blue, or to select someone's eyes in a photograph and sort of brighten them up. And for me, masking it sort of opened up possibilities of drawing out relationships. Like when I saw this bag, it looked like a, a human torso to me. And when I took its picture, that's sort of what was on my mind. When I got the negative back, I started to look for opportunities to sort of enhance that, that relationship. One of the tools that I've used a lot is the clone stamp. You would use to, to take out imperfections, or you would use to remove a lamppost from a street. I think something with the clone stamp particularly that I'm really excited about is it's an activity that can be either additive or subtractive. So you can cover something up, say, take an object out of the picture, but if you did it poorly, it would, it would leave this kind of interference pattern in, in the background. There's been an anxiety about sort of, you know, why would you make another picture now? What's the, what's the point? There are pictures of everything already. And I really have started to think about photography as an activity of drawing. It's a way to try to understand the world through making a picture of it. And this seems to be a continuation of the historical activity of drawing, like drawing with a pencil. When I started, what I was doing was sort of making a burlesque of commercial practice, right? It was really these were the only people who were using digital effects in their pictures. And so I use all of the tools that I use in a really similar way. They're all really this shovel, you know, They're this extension of the finger being sort of stuck into space. It's an entry into a space that I couldn't enter any other way but through Photoshop. Humor for me has been an important thing in my work because it's a way to sort of bring people into the room. It's literally disarming. Like Buster Keaton or like early cinema, it's people who were incredibly effective at drawing 
our understanding of the cinema. Buster Keaton's gags give us a way to enter movies. Humor for me is about relationships. It's about an invitation to relate to the objects in the pictures, and I, I think that more and more as time has gone on, it's been also about relating to the, to the sort of ambiguousness of photographic digital space and the way that it's now being construed. I believe in, in art because art makes new spaces. It, aesthetics is a way of sort of proto-thinking, of thinking before you can think these new thoughts. Even in the goofiest, most ridiculous way, aesthetics is a way of sort of unpacking possibility.